up guys welcome to part four so in part four i need to figure out the I'm pretty much part four is the end of the video end of the series um so i ordered some cable chain and i don't know if i can get this in there or not i mean i guess i could get smaller cable chain i guess but i mean i wanted to get that bowden tube in there if i could but i don't know if i can really fit in there just i mean i'll, I'll figure it out but I'm going to do a cable chain. I'm just going to wrap this up nice and organized. That should work too. Um, just It's pretty tight in here up this way for the cable chain. So I can, uh, I still haven't given up on it yet. So, um, But I did design the new uh, cooling duct for the park cooling van. So, um, yeah, I worked on this last night. Fusion 360. So I decided originally this thing had a 5015 fan. So I wanted to go to like a 40-20 fan here. Um, yeah, because I, I mean, I'm not going to need a lot of cooling. Like I said, the primary function of this printer is uh, high-tap materials, ABS, nylon, polycarbonate. Um, so, um, let me show you that works. Let me get that on there. This is going to go here over the fan. And let's see, there's little holes in here. That allows air to come through. Well, three of the sides are open. So that's going to mount on top of here, and that's going to hold the 4020 fan back here. And then this is the duct that goes underneath it. So I did this in carbon fiber PLA, but all right, so that's going to go something like that. Somewhere in there, hopefully. I might have to redo this, but we'll see. And then I kind of, in my CAD drawing, I actually downloaded the Pico H2 in, the, in this fan, so I kind of modeled, modeled it around here. So I'm guessing it should sit up somewhere in here. I might have to mess with the height, so. All right, so I'm gonna get the 4020 fan on there. So not all these 4020s I noticed are the same. I mean, the outside dimensions are the same, but look on the side, see how this, this, this is actually a dual ball bearing one, which is pretty good, Winson. Um, but see how this goes a lot further up than this one? This is a Creality one. So, to me, it seems like you don't have a smaller gap to suck in air between here and here. You know, whereas you have a lot more space in here to grab air. I mean, this was for a specific, like a parkling fan on a Creality printer, but you have a lot more area to capture air. So I think I'm going to use this Creality one. I don't think, I don't know if it's dual ball bearing or not, but. Yeah, the uh, sleeve bearings. The sleeve bearings, they wear on really fast. So before I bother installing it, let me just do a quick fan check. Make sure the bearings aren't going out. Blow. Yeah, no, I did a comparison test before with this a while back, I think. That's why I put up my one of my other printers, is that this one actually flowed a lot more air than this one. Alright, so this is always usually an issue when I design any sort of extruder system is getting the right clearance between the nozzle and the duct. So I'm too far on the on the duct here, so I gotta make it smaller here. Um, but at the same time, I want it to direct, not sort of. I want it to be at an. I want. I don't want it to go straight on. It's kind of tilted at an angle to go down like that. So I want to hit right at an angle like that. So I'm slightly hitting the tip, but I'm also going down into the part a little bit as well. So, um, I think about maybe two. I mean, I want it to be close, but I also don't want it to be, I don't want it to hit like a, you get, you get like part curl. The part starts warping and curling, you don't want to hit the duct as well too. So, what's funny is I had all this bottle like uh, with the stuff in there, like with the, the thing. But like I said, the dimensions just aren't correct. So, right, a couple of adjustments. Got some good clearance here, a couple of millimeters clearance. The pops will pop right now. All right. It's a couple of millimeters clearance, and the direction of the flow is like on this direction, like right here. So it's like right in the path. I mean, I guess it could go a little bit lower down this direction. It's sort of like right. In the, that's what at least it feels like this way. It's also hitting this thing coming down, so we're getting good flow. All right, then I um, decided to just wrap the, the wires. So I'm still gonna put, I'm probably gonna put like a 90 degree bracket here to bring this down, to stay it down here. 
Hmm, maybe we'll, maybe we'll work itself in, but now I can get full clearance. Yeah, I wasn't going to be able to fit the cable chain in there. Maybe with a smaller cable chain, but... Alright, so I'm still going to modify the wires. I can look a little bit more clean here. At least so you don't see the wires, maybe. Design some sort of bracket to come around here. Up and around, like a 90 degree bracket. Um, but yeah, I got more things to do with worry about that right now. So, um, all right, so I got good flow coming through here. So the air, the fan, the 35 millimeter fan now is inside this ducting right here. So I'm getting air on three sides. It should be enough, it's not a big fan. So I should have enough volume space-wise to get enough air cooling in here. So we'll see. It's meeting this up to 260 right now, 90 degrees. Good, do another uh, ABS uh, test cube. So yeah. what I'm testing here is, I'm going to do a calibration cube and ABS, but because the, the part is so small, the layer time doesn't have enough time to cool down, right? So that's where the layer cooling fan comes in, a partial layer cooling fan. Like if you're doing a really big part, it doesn't matter, because there's enough time for the layer to cool down between runs, right? But when you're doing a really small part, you have to use a layer cooling fan. Yeah, I've been printing 3D printing for a very, very long time, and it's still fascinating to me. Just the movement how this thing operates and that's pretty crazy you know we didn't have this stuff growing up so at least for me you know like when i grew up we didn't even have cell phones or internet so right now i'm using orca slicer uh, abs defaults so the fan just kicked in so we'll do a before and after of what it looks like with and without the cooling fan at least on a small calibration cube yeah after three layers it kicks on a percentage of the fan so it's not max fan it's probably like I guess I can um, I'll just tell here. Let's go to settings, 73%. So um, I guess that's kind of a lot of fan. I mean, that's what Clipper has for, for default. So, all right, huge improvement. So, I mean, I actually have not zero tuning with this thing. So, um, I can hook up my accelerometer to it, maybe do some tests, maybe a pressure advanced test. Yeah, this is definitely like a unicorn printer. I haven't seen this printer any other place. Um, yeah, I've worked on many, many, many 3D printers. I've never seen one like this. Um, like I said, I wouldn't have even bothered if the motion system wasn't so smooth and the way this thing was built. I mean, everything is perfect on this thing. It's the way how it moves and how smooth it is. It's incredible. So I'm going to do a quick PLA, PLA test and Tomorrow I'm going to come back and I'm going to cut out the side panels. I didn't want to cut the side panels out until it was done. Um, that way I could reach in there and do stuff. So, yeah, that's incredible. So let me get the, uh, let this thing cool down a little bit more. But, um, all right, let's take a quick look here in the, in the light. So I knew this printer would actually print good because I could tell that this was a PLA with the stock firmware that was on there. I and mean, that's pretty damn good for a stock printer. Um, I mean, look how tight the layer cool. I, I think they're probably 1.1 millimeter, but look how, I mean, there's some vibration, so I haven't even done any sort of tuning on this thing, but I know the mechanics can do the, can do that good, uh, you know, that well of a printer, but I know small printers actually typically also print better. So, here's sort of an evolution of, um, this is when the actual, uh, the pulleys were off. Like, it has these odd 17, uh, teeth pulleys. So, um, so it's actually 34 is a rotational distance. So, um, I thought I had one that was worse than this somewhere. Yeah, I might have thrown it away. Uh, but you can see the, the difference in the cooling. All right, so I'm going to do a carbon fiber PLA thing here. So I'll get my, actually I'm probably going to have to change the offset here a little bit. Down to fine tuning. Right here. All right, I'm gonna bring it down. Try. Let's see. Yeah, this PEI sheet was really, really good. Point two. It's a big difference between that and the. Well, one thing I will say is because this plate is so big it holds the bearings, you really can't even see. It's very difficult to see what you're printing. So I might put an LED in there probably. Um, 
maybe somewhere in here, you know, put some kind of LED facing down, maybe even the back facing forward so I can see, you know, what's going on with the, the thing there. Oh, I'm not going to figure out this thing up here, my, my wire. It's a carbon fiber PLA. This is actually a really old carbon fiber PLA. And I live at the beach, so I'm sure this thing has all kinds of moisture in it. But what I'm looking at is how crisp the lettering is. I'm not too worried about surface quality because I can fix a lot of that stuff. God, I wonder this PI sheet is. So I ordered a new PI sheet because I ripped a hole in this one. Plus this one was coming up anyways. Like it was when I was doing the ABS, it would the the adhesive would come up. So let me get this up and just take a look at the light here. Alright, so this is not going to be a high speed printer, but you can see I need a little pressure advance here in the corner on that letter right there, the X. I mean, carbon fiber PLA, if you're not familiar with it, prints incredible. See the see how rough it is? I'm guessing there's a lot of water in the filament. That corner, I could probably do a little pressure advance over there. Right there on the end of that Y. The right hand edge of it. So, yeah, you can see some ghosting there on the X. All right, so, all right, tomorrow I'm going to do the plates. Be back tomorrow, I'll cut the fiberglass, or not the fiberglass, but the plexiglass plates and get them mounted. And, um, yeah, I'm pretty excited, man. This, this printer's giving me a good printer. Maybe I can, I might be able to retire the printer, but... I retire, but put it like in a mothball fleet. <laughs> because this thing has saved my ass so many times. It's kind of crazy. Um, like when all my other printers would fail, this one would actually still be working. That's why I didn't want I kind of stopped modifying it probably like two or three years ago. Just because I wanted a very reliable printer in case all my other ones fail. Well, my other ones, since I'm playing with them so much, they're always failing. So, um, you yeah, know, I'm always experimenting with them. So. All right, today is a new day. Excited to get my desk clean again, get this thing finished. So, interesting observation I made last night. This printer prints better, faster. So that's 60 millimeters per second. This is PLA plus, and that's 100 millimeters per second. So take a look at that. I hope you can see that in the light. Um, see, the lines are smoother. So I was actually dialing pressure advance, and I was trying different speeds. And obviously it's not dialed in. You can still see the corners, but I mean, see how much smoother it is on the surface. So it's picking up some kind of resonance at slower speeds. This is, you know, I think this is a hundred different different results, but um, but yeah, look how smooth those backs are. You know, so I'm picking up what's it called? Some kind of resonance here in, in the printer. But see that way better surface quality. Um, all right, so I decided to hook up my little uh, resonance tester. I have this for many years. I think it's a KUSB. I designed a case for it, too. Um, it's on my thing wrist page. But since I, I took it out of the case, I could uh, hook it onto the thing here. So I'm going to do a... I already have a macro. Same one I use for the other ones. Um, resonance auto calibrate. And that's going to go back. It's going to start doing... Some Frequency testing, it's going to do X and Y, and then you can see it moving here. And then I'll go back and save the configuration and do another test print. See if it makes any difference at all. Alright, so it's done testing. I'm going to save the configuration. It's going to reboot, and then I'm going to go back and look at the configuration and see what it shows. Machine, printer, it down the bottom. Save config file. Alright, so that's what it put on there. Two hump DFI. Alright, we'll do another, uh, I'll do another slow config and see if it makes any difference. It probably won't make any difference, but I'm going to do another one exactly like this and see if it gets out any of those ripples. Alright, let's take a look here. So the factory um, firmware had some really small ridges. And I looked at my original, because I did this one originally in Cura, because I actually already had the profile for this printer. But Clipper didn't have, or an Orca Slicer didn't have one, but here's the most recent input shaper. 
let's take a look. So really, it looks like the ridges are still there. I mean, they're slightly less pronounced, but like it is actually slightly better. Well, all right, so I decided to do a speed run. So it's 120 millimeters outer wall and 200 millimeters inside stuff. So see if this thing can hang uh, 5,000 Mach acceleration. Um, All right, so I'm guessing well, 60 millimeters per second on the first um, first layer, but like normally this thing would be able to print fast, but ha by having the motor up here, you're adding a lot of weight, so you're you're kind of limiting your acceleration by having this big motor up here, uh, at least in the in the Y direction. But at least the Y direction is controlled by two two bells, two different. It's not the cool thing is it's not it will stay in sync better because it's it's driven by one motor. And there's a rotating shaft back here that links the two together. Um, well, we'll see how this goes. I mean, like I said, this seemed like, seemed like it printed better at higher speeds, so. Um, all right, we'll come back when it starts going. But I might want to, I mean, if I'm going to be going high speed, then I probably want to put a bigger motor here on the Y direction. Because that's actually where all the weight is at. Right. Surprisingly, handles are pretty good. So on the inside, it's 200 millimeters, and the outside wall is 120 millimeter. Let's see how hot that motor is getting back here. I think I'm running at 600 milliamp. I could cut those panels, uh, the plexiglass panels on the, the router here, but it's going to be a long time around the setup. Um, so I'm just going to hit it with my bandsaw up here and then come back and clean up the edges with my belt sander here. All right, so I knew this printer would be good. All right, so no pressure advance, 0 0.2 or 0 0.02, 0 0.03. So I'm going to keep on going up until I, until I get to about point. Well, until I start seeing it go the opposite direction. So you'll know when it goes the opposite direction, you'll start getting puffy. So it's starting to get a little bit puffy. All right, got some uh, plexiglass sheets cut on here. Let me show you the uh, quality. I'm not sure you call this triangle or what it is, Y, whatever you want to call it. Um, so I started out with no pressure bands. Then I went to 0 0.6, which was, or actually that's 0 0.4, which is too much pressure bands. You know, up to, and then three, and then so I settled between 2.5. And then from there, I just started working on different uh, slicer settings, like different the amount of walls and uh, inner, uh, inner, outer, inner, different strategies. I didn't even change the speed though. But this last one is incredible. Desk is kind of dirty, but so some of those, those little things right there are, are just infill. This, you can slightly see them. So, what I could probably do is change the uh, acceleration into that corner, like you know, slow down the acceler or the uh, the speed and acceleration into the uh, infill when it hits a corner. But um, but the quality is incredible. How smooth the lines are. I can maybe like once I oh, I also changed the you know, inner outer inner, but I think I said that already. But when I went from that strategy somewhere in here, it seemed like the pressure advance. I could turn it back up by probably 0.05 or 0 0.005. Alright, so I'm going to do uh, another print here for just uh, something I'm working on. Man, that's pretty smooth. I'm going to take this old dual plate off here. Um, I got this new like little magnetic steel with the magnet because it's kind of hard to reach in here and get it off there because it wants, if it wants to stick on there, yeah, really good. Um, so it's going to be nice to be able to take that whole thing off and, you know, take it out. Alright guys, I got to scratch the SKR Pico. I was messing with it for a few hours and I even actually pulled one of the pins out to the 3.3 to the on the uh, software download header. 
it's a direct way to program the actual uh, ARM processor. So in case you ever get like your your thing gets corrupted, you know your bootloader gets corrupted, you can reflash it from there. All right, so I got the new board squared away, installed, everything reprogrammed, clipper working. Um, so there is. That's the heater, the thermistor. Everything's looking good. Getting a good reading on it. So the cool thing is with this new version of um, um, Clipper screen, it automatically showed up. But I'll go into after this. I'll go into Clipper and I'll show you pretty basic what I do, how to do to configure it to get it to show up. All right, guys, KD Tech is done. All right, so now I can retire my printer bot. All right, so here is the top lid I was talking about. Um, so it's basically like plastic of glass on three different sides. And uh, so I can actually see what's going on in the printer. I'll show you that once I heat this up and I'll load some film it. And uh, I mean, everything's looking good. I, mean, I got the Pi cam around there and I got the chamber sensor, obviously the five inch touch screen. Um, I also, um, I was having issues with the, with the SKR Pico. So I changed over to uh, SKR to the board that I had. Um, it just this gives me more options for inputs, fans, and that kind of stuff. So um, I was I got, planning on doing some other stuff too. So in case I have, ever have to install like a like a heated chamber, I want more inputs and outputs for that. So all right, got the lid on. So originally my first design was a little bit more rounded, and then I changed it. Um, it was a lot more rounded here, but then I changed it to kind of match the boxiness of the box. Um, all right, so all this stuff will be on my thingers page. I think I already put that one on there already. Um, all right, so we're going to let this kind of heat soak for a little bit. I said we started out at 28 degrees. And we'll see what kind of difference it makes here. Probably should have done with this, though, but let me grab that out. I'm going to do a test print with PLA uh, Plus. A little calibration cube. And, uh, yeah, some of this tube that I had, it's, it's pretty flexible, the PTFE tube. Um... So actually I have more PTFE2 coming in. That's going to go longer and round to the back. So I decided to keep the spool in the back just because it's, uh, I guess it was, I guess it's kind of compact. But um, this is actually an awesome printer. I mean, this thing is crazy heavy. And that's actually the thing why it's going to print so good is that it has this heavy steel case. So this is a crazy heavy printer for how small it is. And that's actually what you want. You want more rigidity. like Just like a CNC machine, you know, you want rigidity. Less vibrations, less... Um, resonance. Okay, so I got a new Bowden tube that goes and fishes around. Comes back out here. Might design a, a different mount for that, but right now it seems like it's pretty good. It gives it some wiggle room to flex back and forth. Um, Alright, so 260, 90 degrees. Dude, mm -hmm. this is a pretty fast print. So it's 120 millimeters on the regular and like 200 millimeters on the straights and like three in the in, 300 in the infill so it's pretty fast surprisingly this, this print i thought it wasn't going to be very fast but it's fast i mean i'm gonna get good quality prints and fast but so i'm still gonna have to mess around over here because i'm getting some kind of rubbish so it's kind of cool like the the lid i can still see through there you know 